Hi friends, so today I'm going to talk about, well I didn't plan on filming this video till like I guess half an hour ago, but I'm going to talk about um, so hybridisation, crossbreeding, and this is mainly focused in lower cards, so plex. And a lot of people, I see a lot of people ask questions and I've, had, I've written, I guess almost essays before, try, explaining what prevents it, how it occurs, and stuff like that. Um, and this might consolidate, sort of, make it easier to put in a long sort of, um, sort of format that's probably easier to access. So let's start with some definitions. So hybridize, hybridization is an event where two individuals of different species are crossed together. Crossbreeding is when two individuals of the same species but likely different variants, different cultivars if you look at plants, or different um, localities, they are bred together, or breeds you could say. so. Um, Crossbreeding, for example, let's look at dogs. Uh, so a poodle with a chihuahua, that would be a crossbreed. Um, or with lower cards of plex, you, you could cross a um, super red with a, uh, uh, what's it, snow white common bristle nose, and that would be a crossbreeding event. Hybridization, on the other hand, is different species. And this is where it gets really difficult and really almost annoying, I'd say, to kind of understand because there isn't a species definition that one sort of, while you get diagnosis for species, there's not one set way of um, defining a species. And therefore, that goes sort of all the way up the line um, with gender and stuff, but it's really um, particular with species and that's why you get so much sort of reshuffling as we learn more and molecular has not given the answer and mor morphology hasn't either so there's so many different definitions and this means that the preventing ways that hybridization can or might not occur d vary depending on the species okay so first i'm going to talk about really why um hybridization might not occur and I think the first most important reason is that the sperm, which is the male carrier, might not actually be able to fertilise or actually get into the female um, egg. And I think that's probably one of the barriers. So um, this is probably one of the main ones, I'd say, because the sperm actually has to sort of, oh, I forget, implant into the egg. And that with hybridization that might be a big barrier and it doesn't matter whether they're um, different genera different species that might be it prevent um, hybridization from occurring next you get genetics their genetics might not be compatible or it might not allow for the actual um, genetic code to I I've not studied that part but it's pretty obvious I think that the genetics might not be viable it might actually the offspring might develop but it might not um, develop um, the whole way, it might stop early, and, or it might come to term, it might not be born alive. Um, there's so many different things with that sort of area. Karyotype is one that I think you are, if you learn about hybridization, you're always told about. If different species often have, well, might have different karyotypes, they might have different chromosome numbers. And this is a major way of preventing hybridization because if a species has a different chromosome number, it likely might not be able to hybridize with a species that has a different chromosome number. And plants are quite good at dealing with this. They have what's called polyploidy and um, they're quite adept at it. I think adept would really be the word. Um, so that they can cope a little bit more than animals. And even within the same gen a genus, you can get different chromosome numbers. So genus is not a way of defining whether if species are in the same genus, it doesn't mean they can hybridize. Because obviously you've got this definition of genus that doesn't the definitions of species and genus are, are ways of categorizing life. It doesn't actually follow through entirely to nature. So you might have and this goes for all of these things. Um, the chromosome number in ancestors does vary across the whole genus. This does not, and a lot of people say that 
all of them's sisters can hybridise together. That is likely, well, very, very, very likely untrue. There's species that are so morphologically distinct that that is not possible. Um, some genera might be closer and this might allow for it, but chromosome number can be a big barrier. So the next one is morphology. Um, and this sort of, I would say, is a bigger barrier when it comes to larger distances and so it really depends. So you could categorise it into several parts, whether um, sexual selection would allow for the hybridisation, that might sort of transfer a little bit into behaviour, preventing it, but also um, they might not actually have the physical parts that will match. Um, they might... Um, no, um, or they might not have the sort of same anatomy that would work really and I would say when you see animals in the wild they re probably recognise their own species and population differently to how we'd see it and in captivity is a very different sort of experiment so I've gone over that really vaguely but there's so much online you can read about different barriers to hybridisation and a big thing would say that hybrids do exist and a big thing about that is whether those hybrids are actually fertile and all of these things can prevent, fer well most of these things can prevent the hybrids from being fertile. So the next one you've got behaviour, behaviour is a big prevention of hybridisation so a species might be one species might be nocturnal, another crepuscular. Um, they might live sympatrically, but then never meet. So they probably won't hybridise um, naturally. In captivity, this might be different. And then this also, I would say, also comes to habitat to a degree. Species might live in a different habitat, so they wouldn't naturally hybridise. But this in captivity again can be messed with a little bit. So those are probably the main ones, there's probably others, especially morphology, karyotype, uh, genetics sort of element, there's so, they're probably the biggest ones and this is really where it comes to the sort of definition. So really hybridisation is a difficult thing, um, to sort of, you can't predict it entirely and of course you've got fertile and infertile offspring. So obviously we see a lot more hybrids in captivity than we might do in the wild and this kind of varies because hybridisation is actually a method of speciation. So speciation is the process in which new species evolve and this you can see it in plants quite a lot I think but also it's why that the sort of tree of life is not a tree it's more of a web because you've also got other processes where distantly like um, so the mitochondria of, um, what would they have been? I think bacteria were then endos, endocytosis, I think it is, into um, what then became um, eukaryotes. And that's why uh, eukaryotes can respire and live in aerobic environments. Same also happened with the chloroplasts in, say, plants, uh, cyanobacteria. But I think they might have been separate events. I can't quite... Well... Obviously the mitochondria and the uh, chloroplasts are separate events. But this is sort of why it's so much more complex than it is. And obviously there's the ethics element. Um, one thing I should talk about when it comes to hybrids is that a lot of people, because of this species definition and this um, the definition of the whole sort of taxonomy, a lot of people forget that regional variants and... Um, regional variants, um, well, sort of colour variants, they might be actually more distinct or as distinct as different species. They might actually not be able to breed with the other members of their own species, especially when you look at ring species. I think there's, I think it's the tiger salamanders in North America that ring around a particular lake. Eventually, at the top of the lake where they meet, they can't actually um, uh, sort of breed again to produce fertile offspring. And... I think that's where it kind of blends a little bit, it gets a bit complicated because species are kind of more spectrum. So, but the problem is, is when you're crossing these variants, and especially if you don't know the origin, you'll put, you might 
be inadvertently, especially with up, like as we know more about cryptic species, you might actually be hybridizing, um, and you're sort of affecting the genetics of a species in the long run. In a lot of other animals, so in zoos, I think with some animals they do record sort of where the fish, is, where the animals come from, not fishes exclusively. But just to avoid sort of crossing different variants, the different variants might have their own morphology, their own genetics, and it really affects what's called genetic diversity. So genetic diversity is the amount of all well, the different genes and alleles present within a population, and also you can set within the species. So really crossing, it's a good idea not really to cross different variants so much if possible wild variants of course captive mess with how you want so it's not a simple question it's not a simple answer you can't say one um, species can cross with um, one species can hybridize with another um, just because one species just because they're in the same genus because it really varies some genuses are so vast that the hybridization can't go through the entire thing and of course you've got the biological species um, biological species definition and that is that different species cannot hybridize together to produce fertile offspring so that might be one to always think about obviously it doesn't count entirely and therefore Speed, it's just a really complex thing and um, you got in nature there is a, always that level of hybridization like Lake Malawi I believe there's a, a bit and obviously as we encroach on the natural world because we all know well if you research it's all not entirely natural as we sort of or as we sort of reduce the habitats this is affecting probably the actual not just genetic diversity but a lot more about species um, so maybe that's all I need to say about hybridization I'll see and it, I'm, no, I'm not really sort of because con concepts and topics like hybridization for me to go explicitly into a taxa I'd have to first do a lot of research which I don't have time for and not much energy for um, and also I think it would get a bit dry because so it's a bit complex and there is papers especially on like uh, the karyotypes of different ancestors to show that they do have different karyotypes and if people are interested I'm happy to link it um, other than that I don't know would people be interested in reviewing scientific journals because I do have access to quite a few at the moment and I don't need just the abstract um, so, yeah, and, well, anyway, I'll stop rambling on. Thank you for watching, um, and that's it.